Hi everybody, how are you? Good. So this presentation is about HackMe, a new way to learn web application security. As you will see in a few slides, it's not just about learning. There's so much more. Uh, we will have 20 minutes of live demonstration here on stage, so uh, hopefully things will go right or you will have some fun. Uh, but very few words about me before we begin. My name is Armando Romeo. I'm uh, a security enthusiast, web application security enthusiast and a researcher for, for uh, a few years. Uh, but I found that e-learning security, that's my everyday job. And um, I already talked to many students uh, here in the room, students of e-learning security. For the ones who don't know e-learning security, it's a, an IT security training company. Um, where we don't just deliver uh, training courses, we are more known for the sophisticated virtual labs that we create. And one of these sophisticated virtual labs will be showcased today, HackMe. Um, we are proud of a corporate member. Yes, of course, I'm Italian. Usually cannot keep calm, but today I'm very relaxed. Um, can use this phrase. I see this phrase everywhere, Twitter accounts. And uh, not yet, maybe someone says it's related to me not being on Facebook, so next year, I'm gonna sign up next year, let's see what happens, in Denver maybe. So, uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, what we are going to discuss today, what is HackMe? I will want to introduce the project, uh, to define the project, determine who it is for, who is going to benefit from this uh, platform. Uh, we will have a 10 minutes demonstration how you can use HackMe. Uh, we will tell you how it works, uh, why it's sophisticated, how it works behind the scenes. Uh, another demo, and then the questions that probably will be taken in the other room. Okay, so what is HackMe about the project? A little bit of information before we begin. Uh, it's a project uh, created in the research and development labs in Pisa by Learn Security. Tons of work, 30 months of work. Someone might say, wow, 30 months. You must be idiots to take 30 months to but there's, there's a lot uh, behind the scene, and we have done a few other things in this uh, last 30 months. Um, so the beta release, uh, beta release was in 2012. Uh, today we are going to release the final version of this, of this project. It's completely free, okay? It's a uh, production of eLearn Security gifted to the community so everyone can use it for free. And the, the domain name is hack.me, so you can either type it now, even type it now, hack.me is the URL where you can access this kind of virtual lab uh, free for all. So what, it, uh, what is hack.me? Um, when I started to think about this project, I wanted to create something um, easily accessible for everyone uh, wanting to learn uh, web application security, 100% practical. Um, and th this is the kind of definition that I try to give uh, back when we created this kind of project. So what is an app store? Everyone uses an app store. An app store is a platform where everyone, every de developer can create applications, put them on this platform, and then anyone else can install, can download and install this application. This is similar to what happens with HackMe. Uh, besides that, we are going to run vulnerable web applications instead of mobile application, right? Um, so, HackMe is a platform where everyone, especially you that are in the field, always, I mean, everyone knows about web application security in this room, and maybe we also have a bunch of developers. Uh, everyone can build, share, and run a vulnerable web application. When I say build, share, and run, I mean that you can use HackMe to create your vulnerable web application, uh, share them with the others, with the community, and have everyone else run these vulnerable web applications on the fly. On the fly, uh, it means that by just clicking uh, a button in your web browser, uh, we will spawn a new sandbox, we will see what a sandbox is, where your vulnerable web application is. This is another view of the project. So the community gives, this is you basically. So power user, someone who knows about web application security, um, creates this scenario share them within HackMe, with our, our cloud. Usually when you say cloud in a presentation, it's always better, but it's, it's really serviced uh, somewhere uh, in the cloud. Uh, and we make them available to the others and within sandboxed environment, isolated environment. So uh, what HackMe is not? 
uh, there's always confusion when we present this kind of uh, project. It's not just a virtual lab. What is a virtual lab? Every IT security training company provides virtual lab where, well, not all, but I mean, the good ones provide you with a virtual lab where you can practice whatever you learn. Uh, usually these virtual labs are networks, computers, uh, web applications. HackMe is not just a virtual lab because it's much more. Uh, you get isolated access and you, it's a community-driven virtual lab. It's not just something that an IT security training company has created and given to the others. It's the community who creates and contributes to the creation of this scenario. Uh, there's nothing to download, okay, no software. Uh, before HackMe, before things like this, you wanted to practice vulnerable web application, you could download, install, uh, I don't know, uh, then vulnerable web application, for example, very common on a CD. Uh, you can have your own uh, local server and you can run this vulnerable web application, your test in local. This is all web-based, okay? Um, it's not just a hacking platform. We don't want this to be just a place where, uh, you know, there are challenges and capture the flag. Uh, it wants to be a learning environment. So, uh, who it is for? Who's interested into this? Uh, I'm sure, well, the very first answer would be learners, of course, uh, since even we are an IT security training company. But I will want to concentrate on the other two, the web application security researchers and the penetration testers. Uh, let's, let's take web application security researchers. For example, on HackMe you can find uh, many different versions of common off-the-shelf software. Let's say Joomla or let's say WordPress, okay? You wanna run a particular old version of WordPress because you wanna run any kind of vulnerability research or any security research how the security has evolved, for example, in these CMSs over time. And you will access, you will find this different version of these uh, common applications on HackMe. And you will run them with just a click, 30 seconds, you will have your, your application. Uh, you can even test vulnerability scanners on the fly. Since you will have many different scenarios on the platform, you can test uh, how good these scanners are against different applications, okay? The last one, penetration tester. Uh, let me make an example. You are a penetration tester. Your client has a, I don't know, Joomla 1.5. You don't wanna run, uh, you don't wanna build your own exploit on the client's uh, production environment. You can find um, the environment on HackMe or you can recreate the environment on HackMe if you know the environment, the client environment. And you can do any kind of destructive test on HackMe before you do it on your client uh, production environment, okay? So the, the best part of HackMe is that you can destroy, you can remove files, drop tables, and start fresh whenever you want with just one reset button, okay? Your sandbox will be recreated. So basically what we want to um, avoid with this sophisticated virtual lab uh, is basically this situation, okay, where two people, or maybe not people, people and animals, stay in the same resources, share the same resources all together. This is typical of the majority of the virtual labs that you find today, right? When you have websites, when you have networks, and where every student uh, attacks the same network or the same web application. This can bring a lot of problems, for example, they can uh, disrupt your environment, they can include malware, uh, you will never find the environment as you are supposed to find it, right? So with HackMe, we, uh, we come to this kind of situation. So separate resources for every user. Every user will have um, an instance of the same vulnerable web application so that your environment will always be clean and you will always be responsible for your own environment, okay? So, let's do a demo. Let me show you what a sandbox is and uh, how you can use it. So let's switch to the browser. Uh, this is the homepage of HackMe. Celebrating this release here. Uh, we have two main usage, so we can either start a HackMe, one of the HackMe that already present in the platform, or you can create your own HackMe. 
Okay, for this demo, we will only start a HackMe. So let's go here, and here we will find a list of available HackMe's on the platform. Okay, these are all contributed by the community. These are community users who are creating uh, these vulnerable web applications. Uh, we were talking about WordPress. So let me just uh, search for WordPress. We will find a few versions of, Word, of WordPress. We are increasing the number of WordPress installations here. So let me show you how we can run uh, a WordPress installation on the fly. So let's get this one, 3.0. This is the home page of the HackMe. The description is where the user, the creator of this HackMe, gives us information about what's inside the HackMe, what I'm supposed to do with this HackMe. And HackMe is a vulnerable application. So as soon as I click Start, a new sandbox is going to be uh, created. Basically, a new instance of WordPress 3.0 will be spawned, will be created only for me. OK? So let's see how much. OK, I have to log in. By the way, uh, registration is free. I logged in, and now HackMe is allocated in my sandbox, okay? Uh, in this particular moment, basically uh, all the files, all the databases, all the configuration for this web application is going to be sandboxed and created and given to me. How many seconds? 20 seconds, and we are done. So uh, who knows this will win 10 months of free usage of HackMe? which is free, by the way. Anyone? Come on, you're American. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, the Rifleman's Creed, the US Marine Corps Creed. So taken also from the full Metal Jacket movie. So, but this is not a joke. I mean, this is my sandbox. There are many like it, but this one is mine. This means that uh, on the servers, on the on, on this cloud, there are many sandbox for this vulnerable web application, but only this one is mine. So I'm going to access this sandbox and I can do whatever I want. So this is my scope. My sandbox, uh, sandbox is my scope, the scope of engagement of a penetration test, which is basically this. So this is the URL where I can access this instance of WordPress. Okay? Uh, if we analyze a little bit of this, we have hack.me, it's our, of course, our domain. Uh, Cpontum is one of the many servers who are in the cloud where this sandbox has been allocated. There are many uh, servers, so according to the, the, the usage, we move the, this sandbox around. And this is your, 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 your subdomain, basically, okay, uh, related to this particular sandbox. So, so if I agree with the terms of service that basically say that you're not going to do any damage, uh, click here we will find WordPress, okay? We have our sandbox with our WordPress running on the fly with only a few seconds. Once again, this is the URL. Uh, and this is a, a real WordPress. I mean, it's not stripped out. Uh, it has all the feature, okay? I mean, here we can do whatever we want with this sandbox, okay? Drop tables, remote file inclusion, whatever we want. Once we are done, we can just destroy this sandbox, okay? It's just a click away. So it's a way to create instances of entire installation of vulnerable web application on the fly. What I have prepared for this presentation, zoom out. Okay. Uh, it's a small application called AppSec. Let's hack me. That basically will show us uh, a very trivial example of how we can uh, modify a web application, okay, remove files or drop tables or just change uh, the appearance of the web application, and how we can start fresh once we have caused this damage, okay? This is causing damage is, 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 
is normal when you when you are a breaker, a penetration tester, or, or even just a researcher, right? So the purpose of the sandbox is this: to be scrapped once we don't need it, and to start fresh. Okay. This was faster because the number of files, the operations were uh, lower. So I agree with terms of service. This is another famous movie, American movie. So this is a trivial application, okay? Vulnerable web application. Um, I hope no one is offended. No one from New Jersey is offended here. Uh, this is Kilgore, the famous Kilgore. Okay, this application is trivial because I can put anything here in the in the box. And this ends up in a database. And the message basically here is uh, read from the database. Very stupid, right? It's the stupid situation of persistent cross-site scripting, okay? But this wants to show you how you can change the appearance of the application through a cross-site scripting uh, and how you can restart this sandbox from fresh, uh, start fresh. Uh, let's just use this code. Let's see if I can manage to use this American layout. So very simple, okay? This is a, uh, we, we change the message. Okay. No one of you has seen Apocalypse Now? You, you've seen it. Okay. Okay, so we change the appearance of this application, right? If we reload the page, the application, application will stay the same because we modify the database, right? I, I didn't have the time to show you a drop table uh, in this case because the time is limited, but this is a way to change the appearance of this application. So once I've dropped table, I have removed files, I have done any kind of damage to my sandbox and only to my sandbox, no one else will be affected by this, right? No one else having another sandbox of this application. I can just click reset. We first use destroy, now we now use reset. With reset, basically we are going to start fresh with the application as the creator of this application supposed it to be. Once again, we come back to the original message of the application. So let's close this. We can destroy this in the meantime, go back to our presentation. So this is basically uh, what a sandbox is, okay? It's a way to isolate the environment. How do we achieve these sandboxes? A lot of work. That's how the, why the 30 months. So we basically create new operating system users, we create new web server user, we isolated these three different layers, the operating system with the first system, the web server and the database. This is how we can abstract, you know, we make sure that the application is contained within uh, this sandbox. Once we have created this environment, this dedicated user with limited privileges and so on, we will give this this new website uh, a new subdomain that is basically the, the subdomain that I shown you uh, before, okay? Who is in charge of this? In charge of this is the so-called Coliseum framework, okay? The students here in the room know that uh, students of eLearn Security have already practiced on the Coliseum labs. This is the Coliseum framework that's behind uh, HackMe. It's the engine of HackMe, and it's responsible for creating all of these sandboxes at these three different layers, okay? So the Coliseum framework basically works like this. You give him a web application, uh, you set up the privileges for this web application, and you will come out with a sandbox, okay, with a new subdomain. It's a framework, why it's a framework? It's a framework because can, it can be extended to support different uh, operating system, different web servers, different languages, okay, in order to be multi-platform. This is our goal. So we can achieve to create sandboxes with all of these technologies. Each technology requires a challenge, a technical challenge to isolate on all of these technologies because 
Apache has its own rules, Linux has its own rules, Windows the same, IIS the same. So uh, we can support different web programming languages, different databases, Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, whatever, Postgre, uh, operating system. What do we support now? Right now we support this stack, uh, IIS 7, PHP, MySQL, YIS, I'm sure the open source guy will be screaming, uh, because Windows allows us, uh, allow us to uh, immediately support a number of upper layer languages, for example, PHP, .NET, Perl, all at once, okay? So we decided to use Windows in the beginning and then ex expand to Linux and all the others. So with this, uh, if you have any PHP application, you can already uh, create your HackMe and use them uh, as I shown you uh, here on the, uh, on the previous demo. So now, you've never created your, your HackMe, it's your first HackMe, let's see how you can create your HackMe, okay? Okay. So basically I'm registered in HackMe, I'm a user. I will go into my area here. There's a developer area here on top, okay? The developer area is where I, I, I find two kind of information. The first, the work in progress, um, Hackmis, basically these are the Hackmis that I am creating but still not finished, okay? And the completed ones. So this is the AppSec Hackme that I have run before, okay, in the previous demo. What I want to show you now is how you can create a new Hackme. So this is gonna bring us to the wizard that will create a new Hackme. Uh, very first information that Hackme requires is the name of the Hackme. So I've prepared um, uh, an application today that is a quote of the day. Quote of the day. Here is the place where I include a description, any description. But this should be helpful for the user who runs this application. Then we can decide for the category. In this case, in this case, the mouse doesn't work. Or the tag, okay? If it's related to SQL injection, I can put SQL injection or XSS and so on, okay? Click create. The, the big arrow, the big green arrow will appear. This is gonna guide me throughout the wizard, okay? The wizard is just four steps when I can, in which I can create the, uh, the HackMe. So you have two ways to create a HackMe. I can either uh, create files from within the interface, create files, write my own code within the interface, or I can upload files, okay? For example, I already have an application on my laptop, or I download an application. So I have the files on my own laptop my own computer, and I can upload this file or import an archive. We will do both um, very quickly. I will show you how you can create a new file, for example, test.php. And here you will find test.php. Okay. I can uh, jump in, and I will find what we call a code mirror. Code mirror is a place where you have syntax highlight, highlighted and so on. So here you can write basically uh, your PHP code. Okay, so echo test, whatever you want basically. Okay, save and close when you are done writing your own, your own code, and this will be a file that will, will appear in the, in, the, in the sandbox, okay, for the final user. Or as we said, we can just import an archive. If you have a zip file with all the files of the application, you can just use this. For example, uh, let me use what I have created here. Quotations.rar, okay? I'm going to upload it, and all the files contained into the archive are here, okay? This is not a uh, trivial application. This is an application that contains a bunch of folders and files. So, I mean, it's a good example. If we go into the admin folder, we can browse the folders. 
so quite a good amount of files. Here I want to show you something. Uh, of course, even one, once I upload files, I can modify these files. So this is the file that contains the connection between the web application and the database, okay, where we make the connection between the two. So it contains the database name, the username, and the password with which we will want to connect to the database, right? I will have to keep this in mind once I go uh, configure the databases within HackMe. So we go back. We are done with the files and folders. Nothing else to create. The next step is the privileges. Okay, every web application has privileges, every folder. For example, WordPress, temporary folder, you want it to be writable so that people can upload files. In a very easy way, I can set up the, the, the privileges for the images folder, make it writable, okay? This is an abstraction of what you would do on the operating system when you configure uh, your, your web environment, right? So the next step is the server. This is an abstraction of the server configuration. Uh, once we support more features, you will see more features here or more web servers. Basically, you will be able to decide on which web server you want this application to run. If you want it to run to be run on Linux, if you want it to be run on Windows, right now, as I said, we support IIS 7, and you only find IIS 7. The index page is basically the, the default page that uh, once we type the domain name will be run. Okay, so it's default.php for this case. Do I need to use PHP? Yes, this application is in PHP, so I will have to add support for uh, PHP. Okay, I will add PHP. Once again, once we will support new languages, you will find, find add.net, add Perl, and so on. For the ones of you who are uh, familiar with the php.ini, this is basically the dynamic libraries uh, that are found in the php.ini, and we can enable a few of them according to the usage within the code. In this example, uh, we use MySQL, right? We use the database, so we will have to enable these two libraries here so that we can make the connection to the database. Any questions so far? Everything's clear? Okay, so this is the, the most interesting part, the database, okay? Uh, this is the place where I have to configure the database. Um, so yes, I want to use a database, and here I can select which kind of database I wanna use. Since it's multi-platform, in the future we hope to, to, to show you here Microsoft SQL Server, for example, or Postgres. Okay. Uh, as you remember, we want to use a database, and within the code we find the database. What the database name was quotation. So this is the place where I have to insert this information. So here I will have to type quotations. Why I have to type it here? So that the Collision framework knows that it will have to create a database in MySQL with this name. Okay, to connect it to the web application. Just the name is not enough because we have to create the schema of the database, right? So we have to import the schema of the, of the database. I have two options here. Basically, I can either run uh, a version of phpMyAdmin, which is provided by phpMyAdmin.net. Okay, it's not provided by us. So I can, uh, it's totally free. I can log in and create my uh, my database, my schema, I can configure it with PHP my admin. Uh, from the database is here. I can create, for example, the quotation. Okay. Everyone can use this basically. Instead of having it on your own machine, you can use this. Uh, this provided here. So questions is uh, quotation is our database. So here I can create the tables, make a dump, and import it into HackMe, okay? In this case, I already, um, I already have a SQL code, okay? I already own a, a dump of the database, the scheme of the database, so I can just click on insert SQL code, and this is the place where I have to copy and paste the SQL code, okay? Uh, this SQL code is here, uh, 
here. Let's see how I can. Okay, this is it. Basically, uh, we should open with some other editor. Let's see. The same. So let me copy everything, copy, and paste it here. Okay. Here we go. So this is the dump of the database with the data, with the schema, with everything, okay? This has been taken by PHP my admin as well. So here you have everything. We, we, we will use the quotations database. We will create the tables. We will insert some data and so on. This will prepare the database, right? So I'm okay, save and close. This is the, the, the schema that I wanna use. Last two things is with what kind of username I wanna uh, log into the database, and what kind of privileges I want to give to this user. This is the same steps you, you follow uh, on MySQL when you have to create a, a new account, a new database. So we will use my user and my pests. If you remember this, I found this username and password within the code. Okay, so here I have to provide the exact same uh, information. The privileges, why I need the privileges? We wanted to give this, this kind of feature because sometimes you wanna create, you wanna segment the access to the database uh, with different users. For example, a read-only user or another user who is um, more privileged. So with this, you can decide which kind of privileges the my user that I have uh, created here has on this database, the quotations database. So I will click on this. And I will find a few basic uh, privileges. Select, insert, update. For us, it's okay to be whole for this demo. So that's pretty much it for the database. I expect the same thing once I finish, by the way. Yeah? <laughs> so this is the overview of our application. So uh, basically what we have done so far, uh, what privileges we have set up, right to the images folder, the web server, uh, the enabled libraries that we have done. Okay, this is an overview of what we have done so far. So what I can do now is finally show the preview, okay? Uh, show me the preview, okay? So basically now we are creating a sandbox out of our files, databases, and all. This is the work of the Coliseum framework. So we are creating the sandbox for the first time. Uh, only a few seconds. You can imagine how many things are going on right now. And hopefully, all of them are going well. Ah, okay, good. So this is our application. Very simple. Other listing. This shows us that basically our database was correctly picked up by the Coliseum framework. I can search for love here. Okay. And I'm basically searching in the database. I created a, a new uh, web application, new vulnerable web application. Uh, I can go in the quote of the day, which is probably the most amusing thing of the entire presentation. Um, I can do basically whatever I want with this, uh, with this you know, web application, SQL injection, cross-site scripting. Uh, if you go back here, for example, anonymous, there's a SQL injection, I can have some fun. So basically I created a vulnerable web application in 10 minutes. Of course I had everything prepared for the database, but exporting from PHP my admin is not a, a big deal anyway. So we have completed the process. Now we are, we are given with two different options, save and publish or save as a draft. If we are not completely done with our creation, we can save it as a draft, okay? And maybe complete it later. In this case, we are done, so we can do save and publish. And I can have two options here, very interesting. 
because if you don't want to share this with others, you want to keep this private only for you, you can do it. Only me is the visibility mode. This is, for example, in cases you want to do your super secret research on your super secret vulnerable web application, you have found something incredible, you don't want to share it with others, you can do it. Uh, you log in, only yourself will be able to, uh, to see this. Otherwise, we advise you to, to use the public. It's the main purpose of the project. So you can make it public, click on OK, proceed. Not now, you should do it. Uh, and here you will find basically the, the permalink and the short link for this uh, web vulnerable web application. Okay, there's a short link. It's short because the domain is short, also very expensive. Uh, but the permalink is basically the home page for the vulnerable web, web application. You can use it in your own, uh, or your own blog, for example. You make a blog post about something, about a vulnerability, you can quickly create an example, a use case within HackMe, and share something practical in your own blog post, in your own articles, in your own presentation, for example. We have professors use this uh, within their classes, uh, universities, or even researchers who, you know, uh, instead of putting their, their environment on a laptop when they do presentation, they just create this before and then start it on the fly, and they can have the entire audience start the same application on the fly. Because if they have a laptop, they can just go to hack.me uh, using the short link, and they will do it in the, at the same time, the same thing that the presenter will do on stage, right? So, okay, I have published my laptop. So now my, um, my quote of the day appears here, okay? It's public, I can start it whenever I want. Everyone can start it because it's public. If I wanted to tweak it, tweak, right? tweak it, modify it, um, I can just click on tweak, okay? Um, for example, I want to add more features. I want to change the visibility mode. Of course, if I do this, it will be put on maintenance mode so no one else can run this application while I'm modifying it, okay? So we, I'm back into the, uh, into the wizard. I can go here and maybe do only me, okay? Or you can just go on uh, modifying some files and folders. Basically, I will resume uh, my entire uh, application. So this is uh, all for the demo. Let's move on with the presentation. We have some slides left. So what do we want to do next? Okay, future development. As I said, we want to extend the platform for more languages, more databases, more web servers. So making it actually multi-platform so that you can decide the same code where it should be run, okay? Uh, we want to enhance, enhance the, the HackMe creation experience, so the entire process that we have done now, we can uh, make it better because we understand that the better it is, the more HackMe we will have on the platform, the more successful the project is. So this is the, one, the things we want to do, what you can do with us and for us. You can join us as a developer to extend the Coliseum framework. Uh, you can be a sponsor. Uh, if you have a company, and join uh, the forces to, to extend. As I said, you can be a HackMe creator. If you want to do, if, if you want to be a developer, want to help us to the, the extend the Coliseum framework, uh, you'll get a lot of things. First of all, a lot, a lot of fame, which, by the way, means hunger in Italian. I should tell you how much we pay the volunteers that will, that will work uh, on this. But anyway, it's a, it's a free project. Uh, but definitely, I think we, th this project is cool and uh, helps quite a lot, uh, many people around the world learning web application security or practice in web application security. So, uh, before we finish, uh, my applause goes to, to, to the HackMe team who has worked hard for the past 30 months. Uh, Giuseppe Petrotto and Domenico Quaranta who are here, um, respectively working on HackMe and the Coliseum framework. Coliseum framework was created two years ago, three years ago almost, and then the HackMe came next. Uh, there would be no HackMe without the Coliseum framework, so it's a, a, a joint project. 
a lot of work, you can ask any question or you can contact us here in the room to team at hack.me uh, for any technical question or any uh, participation you want to make. So uh, we, we, we were talking about quotation. I will end with uh, what the best band ever said in one of their best uh, songs. So the, the time is gone, the song is over. Nothing left to say besides thank you very much. For the question, maybe uh, in, in the other room, Imperi Imperial Room, uh, we can take any question, right? Or we can do it here? Ah, uh, here? Oh, please, please, any question is welcome. Please. <coughs> License. Yeah. Basically, uh, you, you keep the copyright of, the, of the, the entire application. We don't want any copyright. The only right that we ask, of course, is to host it on our environment and make it public to all the others. So we don't own any copyright on your code. So the code is yours. Um, but basically, the purpose of the, of the platform is to make it available to all the others. Unless you use the only me mode, you know that only you. Sorry? I, I don't hear. So, so the question is how safe is the sandbox, basically? Definitely. Well, the sandbox uh, was born in, uh, right for that, to avoid uh, shared environment. So the sandbox is only for you. No one else can, even if they know the link, okay, it's tied only to your PC, to your IP address, and to your PC. So only you can enter the sandbox, okay? So only you can modify the sandbox. No one else can put any malware on it. That's why it's nine, nine that's the, the, the second part. This is the 99% safe. The other 1%, for example, someone uploads some malware as a Hackme, we have a moderation of the Hackme. So we actually go through uh, each and every um, new Hackme that's been posted on Hackme to make sure that this is not a place, you know, for drive-by malware and, and, and stuff like that. So definitely, definitely. How, so the question is, how long will the hack me stay on our website? Basically, how long you want, you will, will always be able to remove the hack me on our website. But basically, standard as, as long as you are here, live, project live, we lie alive, uh, the, the, the hack me will be there. So no limitation, no, no expiration, basically. Please. Uh, so the question is, is it possible to upload an ISO of a pre-configured si um, system? You include also the web server, maybe? Uh, no, no, only the web application. Then we take care of creating the web server for you. Any other question? Please? Basically, yes. When we uh, isolate at the operating system level, we allow you to do, um, well, a, a, a sort of um, a subgroup of commands on the, on the operating system, but definitely for learning purposes, you, you, can, do, you can do this. So you can even run uh, commands and, and everything else. Questions? No more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.